Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to give you a quick rundown on why we should always be using that meta viewport tag. So I've got a little dummy page set up here, and in the head section, there's nothing of note, really. I've just got some uh, internal styles. The body of the page is just some text, and there is an image available there. And it looks like I am missing an angle bracket on that image tag. So got that fixed up, and so this is the page, and this is pretty much old school HTML here, nothing fancy. Now, I'm going to take this page and display it. I'm uh, using the Firefox browser, so I'm going to do Control Shift M, take it into a mobile mode. I'm set to an iPhone 10, and notice the iPhone 10 here has a uh, device width of 375 and height of 812. 375, 812. Yeah, that's not the resolution of the device, so just when we're working with these mobile devices and designing and media queries especially, we want to make sure that we're aware of common viewport sizes as opposed to device resolution. So you can see just kind of scanning uh, scanning through this list here, most modern phone devices and um, seem to be you know, 375, 400, 375, 414, so, so basically, 375 and higher is a reasonable kind of number to go for. Um, and we don't want to worry about heights too much, especially if we're assuming that our users are in portrait mode. Um, I'm sorry, uh, so, yeah, yeah, portrait mode up and down uh, most of the time. However, let's see what we can do to fix this page very, very easily with that meta viewport. So in the head section of my page, and I'm going to put this after my meta car set, my character encoding. Meta name equals viewport. Content equals width equals device width. There we go. That's a pretty good start. Meta name equals viewport. Content width equals device width. There's not a lot of properties or um, that we can put in with our meta viewport. In fact, I have them open right here. We can put in width and height, initial scale, which I'll do in a second, minimum scale, maximum scale, and user scalable. Um, for the most part, width is probably the most important, and setting it to width equals device width is probably the best way to go. You can actually put a number in there, width of 500, width of 375, but because there are variances in these device widths, it's not practical to do that kind of thing unless you were styling or designing specifically for one particular phone model, which we wouldn't really do. So width equals device width is a great way to go. Now just adding that's gonna have a tremendous impact on our page. And now when I refresh and say, okay, the mobile phone is actually already in a pretty good readable state. So if I was just looking at this on the desktop, there we go, pretty standard stuff. Go back into phone mode, control shift M on Firefox. Yeah, so that's a great way to go, just adding that meta tag in there. So if your page is predominantly text with a few images and things like that, I will point out on my image, I did do some inline styles. I set the width of this image to be 400 pixels wide, although I put a max width of 50%. I never wanted this image to be more than 50% of the width of the device that was displaying it. So, so that was a pretty critical step there, because obviously if I don't have max width of 50%, then this image could actually become wider than the device itself. Okay, so let's look at some of those others um, properties that we can put into our meta viewport. Width equals device width, definitely always use that one. The other one I'm always going to put in here, even though it's defaulting to it rather well, comma, initial scale equals 1.0, or you can just use a 1 there, but 1.0 is pretty common. So basically, when somebody first goes to that mobile device, this is going to be the zoom level of your web page. So yeah, 1 would be the most appropriate. It'll really stand out, though, if I do something like a 2 there. So if I'm on this page, in fact, let me exit out, Control shift m in Firefox, and we can see my page is zoomed in twice. So that doesn't seem practical for a web page. Perhaps if you're designing a phone app, maybe uh, you might be doing something like that. So initial scale one is going to be the way to go. And let's see, save that browser. Let's exit out of mobile. 
There we go, so now we're back in business. So this is the meta tag that I would insist that all of us use all of the time. Meta name equals viewport, content equals width equals device width, initial scale equals one. What about those few other properties that we can use? Minimum scale, maximum scale, user scalable. With something like user scalable, you could put in a value of no, meaning a user could not pinch and zoom on your phone, your mobile web page. You don't want to do that. You don't want to take away a person's ability to zoom in and out, pan in and out. Once again, perhaps if it was a phone app, but for standard web pages, taking away the user's ability to scale up and down, to pinch and zoom, is going to take away a great accessibility feature of your website. So no need to worry about height, uh, no need to worry about minimum scale, maximum scale, or user scalable. Just go ahead and put in this basic one. Width equals device width, initial scale equals 1.0. That's a great way to start any of your responsive web pages. Take care.